Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks in another episode of Beyond All Reason, another match that was submitted by a viewer like you. I hope you're ready for a long one. Grab your drink and grab your snack, because today we're taking an hour-long look at a match of Beyond All Reason. Now, these matches that tend to go long, uh, usually they end up on Glitters or Supreme Isthmus, and indeed, this is one such match. So today, spawning on the northern side, representing the blue team in Armada Commander that goes by the name of Total Loss, coming in at 28 true skill and spawning here on the beachhead tech position usually it's a tech position it's a little bit of a changed uh opportunity here on this front line we'll get into that in just a second here but spawning all the way across the map here on the sea lane position representing the red team as a cortex commander all colors looking great here in that fire truck red a commander goes by the name of celine celine here or maybe celian celine we'll go with celine Celine here going into a bot lab. Very good start. It's one of those uh, tricky decisions, right? Do you rush all the way out to Navy and try and fight the Navy from a slightly less opportune angle? Do you try and just bunker up right here and go for a whole bunch of eco right here? We'll have to see what the Red Commander gets up to. Supreme Isthmus. It's one of those maps that we see all the time. It's one of those maps that we uh, always see those new blobbies playing. And for good reason. I mean, it's ideal circumstances as far as the Isthmus goes. It's very easy to learn how to control a front line here. You're basically just going to put units on here and try and micro them as best as you can. But as far as the actual strategies go, it can be quite varied. There's a lot of interesting little micro opportunities that a lot of different commanders have. Like for instance, what Quad is doing here, going for a naval lab instead of supporting the front lines here, means of course that this front line is gonna be a whole lot weaker than traditionally. You would normally have this commander going for some eco at the very least, and then maybe pumping out units and sending them to the front or going for eco and then building a naval lab. Instead, we're not going for that eco at all. We're just rushing into the Navy. It could absolutely catch the red commander alpha blade here who hasn't even gotten into the water yet definitely a bit of a slower start there uh completely off guard in fact if quad is aggressive enough keeping control over this navy early on in the game would be tremendously helpful for the blue team usually that can result in an outright win uh, and so I'm hesitant to say that that probably isn't going to be the case here. But either way, Quad going into a couple of those constructors, going to start building up some ships. Love that we're going to grab that metal extractor here. That was bugging me a little bit. Love the resbots. Mass resbots as well sent out by Total Loss. And my goodness, what a, uh, what a reclaim field. Just going absolutely insane with it. This is what happens when you have too much APM. <laughs> going to eventually reclaim the lab here. Interesting. So we're going to go into a T2 lab. I imagine we must be. Yeah, all the uh, all the resbots sucking up those trees and turning them into juicy, juicy energy. Eventually, we're going to turn it all into a geothermal here as well. And I suspect that once that geothermal comes up, we'll start looking towards a T2 here. Very tight build order right now, though, from Total Loss. Definitely looks like this is rehearsed quite nicely. Goes for the energy depot here, and I think this is a great, opportunity, or a great option here. Geothermal is very expensive in the energy sector. I think it's 15,000, I want to say. Ooh, bar trivia here coming out. Let's see. 13,000. That was pretty close. 13,000 energy is quite difficult to come by in the early game. I mean, you can imagine 100 energy per second or something like that going to be quite difficult here. No major run buys for either team either. The uh, aggression has been relatively minimal. A bit unfortunate. Especially with how on top of it the blue team has been as far as reclaiming goes. Resbots out here have eaten up a whole lot of metal. Deebs marches forward. D guns down the LLT. Ooh, and catches the tank that was hiding behind it as well. That's actually really nice easy to forget that those tanks do cost a lot of metal 225 metal i mean it's 20 percent or more of your uh starting metal right you start with a thousand so quite a lot in the early game here mons you gotta you gotta move back buddy those lots are gonna blast you down quicker than you can say uh retreat 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 mons now left with four percent left on that commander Deeves looking pretty good right now gotta be feeling pretty good too you can't dig on the commander. Yeah, apparently Mons hasn't played in a good long while. This is a little bit of an older game, but not quite that old that you can still dig on commanders in this one. There goes a blitz, hero blitz marching over in this direction. This is actually a lot of blitzes, certainly enough to snipe this commander. Oh, Monkey Ross doesn't have the D gun. Oh, it'd be killer. Oh no, didn't have the energy for the D gun right there. If we could D gun down those blitzes that could shut down this lane for another good solid couple of minutes. Not gonna happen though. Monkey Ross just doesn't have the energy and the blitz has managed to run on by. Grabbing the metal extractor too, that's 4.3 metal per second going right down the drain for the purple commander. And I don't think those blitzes are quite done yet. Gonna snipe another metal extractor. At this point, I wouldn't even mind seeing them split up here. You don't really need all six of these blitzes marching forward towards the purple base. This is gonna do a tremendous amount of damage though. Yeah, those red spots headed on a direct collision course with the purple base who isn't producing any units. Oh no, we need blitzes of our own. Pretty much the only thing that's gonna be fast enough to keep up with these blitzes and actually put up a good enough fight. Oh, this is terrible. 
loses a tremendous portion of the economy over here. Total loss forced to use the commander to move in this direction right when the commander is most needed to sacrifice for that T2 lab. You can see that T2 vehicle bay actually coming up right now for the per or for the uh, blue commander, rather. Uh, eventually, those blitzes are dealt with, but man, that is a huge amount of damage. The purple commander is sent into crisis mode. We need this metal extractor back up and running. We need all these metal extractors back up and running. That really, really hurts. Air Scout's moving across the map right here. I do see the Seafoam player going for a little bit of a scouting opportunity. Looks like we were not very aggressive in the naval field over here as Alpha Blade has established themselves quite nicely as the Powder Pink Commander stepping foot into the water, getting their boats out, getting their boat on. Beautiful scout right here by the blue team, though. Aaron, Aaron NL, doing a great job of scouting. Yeah, I mean, basically gets a perfect... Vi oh, that's the wrong team, I just realized. There we go. Gets a perfect scout of the entire red team. Yeah, everybody on the red team is revealed now. So not only does it tell you who is playing on what position here, but it also tells you where all the wind turbines are, where all the solar panels are, where all the expensive tech is that uh, you, well, you need for your economy, right? So very nice to have that in case you want to go for a follow-up bombing run. It's unlikely that these wind turbines are going to move here. My goodness, those are so close together too. You space your wind turbines out by one click in order to prevent them from chain reacting. So you see how there's one click between them. You, uh, you uh, alternate between the Z and the X, Zulu and X-Ray, uh, in order to spread out these wind turbines. And if you spread them out by one, they won't chain react. If you keep them gr grouped together like that, though, they will. And it only takes a single bomber in order to chain react them all. Juno on the front lines. Oh no, this Juno is way too far forward. 640 metal, 17,000 energy to build a Juno. And also it takes a huge amount of energy to run as well. I think it's like 500 energy per second down the drain. It's available in T1, but it really, really is a T2 sort of a, sort of a structure. You don't really want to build one of these until you have a really solid energy infrastructure at the very least here. That's not going to finish either. My goodness, didn't finish, didn't get to charge any of those rockets. That's so much metal right down the drain right there by the Maroon Commander. Mon's maybe not aware of what that unit is or what that structure is, pardon me. And uh, goes for a little bit of an in inconsistent unit composition. And just like this, I mean, we have a really nice push here. We do have the missile trucks up in front. We have the Wolverines in back. There's not a whole lot of sustain in front of all this. And we also have the Agitator locking down the middle of the map. At the very least, denying a lot of these uh, metal extractors over here. The trigger will be pulled, and we're going to start trying to uh, send some of these units forward. The Blitzes colliding with the wall over here. The Mawa. There we go. The uh, medium tanks as well. Janus is firing away their heavy rockets, but that agitator more than building itself up. Very, very nicely done. Yeah, five confirmed kills on that agitator. Very nicely done. That's definitely a well-used piece of static artillery right there. Mons loses the shipyard right here. Went for a very cheeky shipyard. There we go. We are finally getting aggressive over here. Ironically, it's actually the uh, player on the sea line here for the blue team. Prepare your Aphis, who has uh, gotten themselves a across the map here with a couple of dolphins. Commander goes down right here. The Maroon Commander was out in the water on that destroyer. Was more than happy to blast it down with those uh, depth charges that it does keep stockpiled in its bowels. Alpha Blade in a weird position where the commander can't use its laser beam and it also can't degun. Gotta, gotta pick one or the other, but can't really stand in the shoreline at exactly that spot. Very fortunately for Prepare Your Aphis, because it means that a lot of these dolphins aren't getting hurt right now. My goodness, this is a very efficient trade. Yeah, that commander can't do anything. He has to either step out and use his light laser, or he has to dive deeper in and use his underwater laser. Lab goes down. Destroyer also in tremendous trouble here. Tremender... Uh, sorry, Destroyer does go down right there. Not sure what the word was that I was trying to say. Tremender. Tremendous trouble and destroyer. Combining all the words into one word and then saying just that. No, the words have meaning, Brightworks. You have to actually use the right one. Uh, Mauser continuing to shell away over here. I mean, how is this not an absolute obliteration right here? We, we basically have a completely collapsed front line for the red team. The blue team marching forward to claim all these metal extractors. This is looking very one-sided right now. I'd be surprised if the blue team manages to throw this. I know the length of this replay, and for you, the length of this video suggests that something crazy must happen. So I'm going to keep my eyes right here because it's going to take some sort of beautiful play in order to shut all this down. Andy M marching forward. Oh, don't tell me Andy M gets a killer D gun right here. Certainly could. Yeah, those tanks are hesitant. They do see the commander. Uh, commander goes in. Okay, nice D-gun. There we go. Clears out a whole lot of those medium tanks. About half of them get hit right there. The mouths are going to fire away, though, to continue doing some damage over here. Not the end of the world. Certainly uncomfortable, though. Ooh, they might even get the commander. Oh, it's so close. Commander down to just 5% HP. Oh, the AOE will get the commander right there. Man, that burns. Loses the commander means no more of these are going to get Deegan. Maroon player, meanwhile, completely obliterated. Out in the Navy. 
Uh, we do have a jellyfish that was set up, actually. Coastal Torpedo Launcher firing away at those boats, dissuading them from being too aggressive against this Chiral. Not bad here. What is our Red Commander up to? Selene has captured this island wholeheartedly. Love to see that. Also going into a naval lab over here, which is quite nice. Green Commander does have a T2 naval lab up and running, but it isn't producing units out of it, which is a little bit interesting. We have a T2 transition fully up and running right now for total loss. Uh, T2 metal extractors aren't coming up, which is a bit interesting. Probably busy microing all these units on the front. Usually you want to take a second to look back and queue these all up using those uh, advanced... Yeah, we're not, we're not spending our metal at all right now. Using those advanced constructors to build that T2. Fiends are now coming out of the lab, though, and those are great for jumping on top of a lot of those Mauser. It's not like the Mauser can't deal with the Fiends if there's enough of them, but the Fiends are fast enough and just sturdy enough that they can usually burn through the uh, artillery support there. Nice catch with these Fiends. They do find Monkey Ross as well. Uh, not going to go for it, though. All right. Fiends coming around for a flank right here. Really nice. They find the exposed underbelly of this blue composition over here. Yeah, I mean, sure. Exactly where you want the fiends. Burning away at those, uh... Yeah, burning away at those Wolverine. Burning away at those Lashers. Burning away at basically all the softer units right there. Mouse are trying to push with their medium tank brethren from a uh, another commander over here. And I like the push. Medium tanks certainly have that sustain that you desperately need in front of your Mauser in order to effectively use them. Those fiends are sneaking in. Bombers also coming across for the bombing run. Fairly efficient here. It's a lot of medium tanks for the orange commander. Cairo is producing medium tanks and also going for T2 at the same time. I think one or the other would probably be the right decision here. Well, that we went for the medium tanks, though. I think that probably would have been better than going for the medium tanks and the T2. Just tons and tons and tons of medium tanks. Maybe throw in a uh, T1 bot lab as well for a little bit of extra resurrection and reclamation. There goes a chain reaction on all that. There goes the power infrastructure for the Orange Commander. And just like that, despite having tons, and unit, tons of units here on the push basically cleaned up, there's basically no way that the Orange Commander is going to be able to get back into this without having a whole bunch of wind turbines or something like that handed over here. All the blue team has to do is secure their T2 transition right now. Secure these front lines and eat up as much of the metal as possible. Oh, Commander going down over here. Yeah, Fiends will burn away a Commander faster than you can blink. There it goes. In a nuclear explosion, the purple commander loses, uh, well, his commander. Navy has been well won over here by the green commander. Has the T2 lab out. Hasn't really capitalized on it at all. No build power over here. A little bit sloppy. You definitely need that build power. Naval lab is up and running right here for the, or the uh, red commander, who does not have a T2 naval lab. Certainly could just go across and kill the green player, though, because no units are out aside from a couple of dolphins. Not exactly the most menacing unit, the Dolphin. Oh, also, we haven't killed the Metal Extractors over here. Oh, no, Alpha Blade has benefited from these Metal Extractors that are still out under the water over here. What is that? That's got to be another... What are those? Two metal per second? 2.3 per second? Yeah, that's, what, nine-ish nine metal per second? Coming back to the Pink Commander? That's huge. You can imagine if these had shut down, this whole T2 lab would have been really, really difficult to bring up. But right, right as it stands right now, I mean, there's really no problem there. Medium tanks. Holding the line, or trying to. Bombers, quite a nuisance. Stormbringers being used against bombers. It's kind of a novel idea. I don't know if I've ever seen that played out quite effectively. <laughs> Stormbringers, not necessarily the pinnacle of bombing technology. They're all right at bombing. They're great at carpet bombing, large areas of soft tar targets, but they're really, really bad at specifically uh, bombing really heavy targets. Which is why I'm surprised at how effective they've been against these tanks right here. I do wonder if maybe that's a untapped medium for dealing with medium tanks is T1 bombers, especially T1 Stormbringers. Ah, finally, it looks like the Dolphins are going to leap on top of some of this action over here. Not bad. T1 lab coming up in the middle of the map here. Loads of LLTs and medium tanks and all sorts of other stuff right here, but it's about time we just get into T2. I mean, I feel like a proper T2 transition wouldn't be the end of the world right now for the blue team. They've got so much space to go for it. We do see T2 coming up for the purple commander, and we already had the T2 lab from way back when for the blue commander. you got to remember, though, the blue commander was a little slow in the draw with the T2 metal extractor upgrade. So really, your T2 transition happens as soon as your eco is T2, not exactly when your, uh, yeah, your, your actual T2 lab is up and running, right? What good is a T2 lab if you can't actually produce anything out of it? 
Nice eco structures in the back right here. Jump's going for double fusion into the advanced fusion right here. It gives you a little bit of a scaling advantage, but if you can't capitalize off of it with a whole bunch of energy converters, then it's basically pointless right now. So do appreciate that we're going for a couple of those. Loads of wind turbines as well. Very close together, so they'll chain react if they get bombed, but at least for the time being, producing a tremendous amount of power that's all going back again to the Lime Green Commander. So very, very nicely done. We did the constructor building some more build power here. I think that's a great idea as well. Somehow, some way we need to spend all this energy. Right now, actually, we need to move the converter bar down because there's not enough room between the converter bar and the overflow bar in order to actually spend the energy for these energy converters. It's a bit of a weird problem, but it is something you have to be aware of. Gonna go ahead and speed this up because it looks like both teams are basically gearing up for a T2 clash. Nobody really content to fight a T1 battle anymore. Metal extractors did go down over here, by the way, which is always good to see. Glad that we eventually took those down, even if it took a little bit longer than I would have liked to see. Chiral in a little bit of trouble here. Ugh, yeah, those destroyers, they can fire away from so far. For a T1, that is, anyways. Single Fiend burning across the battlefield here. Does actually manage to scuff up some of those tanks, which is a little bit awkward. Deves maybe realizing, eh, this isn't exactly as well fortified as I had imagined. Antinu comes up on the front line. Love to see that. That would be a real shame to lose this entire thing to a single nuclear strike. Landmines have been set up over here as well. I'm expecting those tanks to roll right into those landmines. Big old T2 clash over here. Dolphins, Buccaneers, Paladins. Even have a despot. Single despot blasting away, but man, does it do work. Now we just need to clean up all these submarines that are left over here. Buccaneers, perfectly suited for the job. Gonna be more than happy to blast away at any of these submarines, especially if they're not looking in the right direction. Yep, there it goes. Another Buccaneer also gonna clean it up. Oh, the despot goes down. That's unfortunate. Not the end of the world with it going down so close to friendly waters, but still unfortunate to lose it either way. Easier to repair it than it is to resurrect it. Either way, though, the army is crushed, and at this point, there's no reason why you shouldn't keep pressuring across the map, using the advantage of your res subs that you're using to eat up the metal, continue trading efficiently until you reach their base and wipe them out. I think definitely Selene needs to pull the trigger here. Commander moving over on this left-hand side. Looks like this was spotted. Submarines will eventually find this commander as well. Uh, yeah. Those are more than enough submarines to deal with this. There we go. Green Commander realizes... Oh, wait a second. I actually have more than enough forces. Yeah. Submarine's pretty good against commanders. Oh, come on. There we go. Down he goes. Slow this down real quick because it looks like there's some bulls on the front lines. We also have a whole bunch of negotiators that have been built up by Deves. Uh, not bad. I mean, I, I appreciate how much damage those negotiators can crank out on the map there. Bull's putting in some work, too. So sustainable uh, as far as durability goes. So durable, probably a better word for them. They're probably not eco-friendly, but they're definitely durable. And then the Ambassadors for long-range fire support. Yeah, actually really, really nice. Missile support, I suppose. Slightly different. Slightly more devastating. Nice micro on these bulls. Making sure to keep them out of that commander's reach. This uh, singular... Oh, that explosion took out so many medium tanks. This singular scorpion battery putting in so much work here. We'll love for these ambassadors to just go ahead and fire away at that uh, scorpion battery there. Looks like we will indeed. There we go. The bulls bring down the one on the right, and the ambassadors will bring down the one on the left here. Just like that, the line is broken. Heavy T2 static defense is completely obliterated by the power of rocketry. Uh, understandable. Rockets tend to be bad for your health. At least on the receiving end of them, anyways. A little bit of an awkward angle here. I'm trying to get a better view of it. Lightning tank's now pushing forward right here. I do love the lightning tank. What a beautiful aesthetic it has. So many of them go down right there. But they're beautiful while they last. Fickle thing, the lightning tank. I love that these ambassadors are also firing out into the ocean over here. Unintended side effect, but yeah, those ambassadors are more than happy to fire away at those ships off the coastline here. Finally, we're into proper T2 production right now. We have paladins coming up. I'd love to see some uh, proper battleships, though. The dreadnoughts, putting those out on the field. Much more impactful than paladins are ever going to be. Uh, until you go up against submarines, of course. Then you're going to wish you had paladins. And that is exactly why we go for a composition. So you can deal with all of it. Despots here ruining the day of Chiral, who did eventually get that T2 lab up and running, but lost the geothermal over here. Would have liked to see it become a Cerberus, I suppose, just because it is so exposed to the naval sector. Yeah, Chiral with basically no production at this point, though. Metal extractors have been shut off. 
the uh, geothermal has fallen as well. Single T1 metal extractor remains, and the Orange Commander is forced to flee. Lightning tank still applying pressure over here. They managed to catch a whole bunch of these Sheldon. Well, I say catch. They get next to the Sheldon, but they don't actually manage to kill a whole lot of them. Fiend's doing a great job of keeping their Sheldon brethren alive. Bulls still ravaging all the rest of this, though. I'd love to see these bulls split off and sent around to kill these metal extractors. I'll settle for them killing a whole bunch of wind turbines in the back line, though. Yeah, there we go. Pops a whole bunch of those energy converters, as well as the wind turbines. Even the e-storage. Just about everything has gone up in smoke right here. Man, those bulls, they hit hard. What a beautiful unit. Big Marauder Ball out in the ocean, though. Yellow Commander in the back line has not been asleep here. We do have a vision, and the vision includes multiple APHIS economy here to pump out as many Marauder as possible. Red Commander also going into proper multi-APHIS economy here. 200 metal per second is not bad. More than enough to produce some of those heavier T2 units and lighter T3 units. Shivas, Karganeth, uh, Marauder, all those sort of things. Buccaneers clashing against the Paladins here. If the Dolphins were on the other side of this fight, I would like it a whole lot more, but unfortunately for the uh, Green Commander, those Dolphins stopped a little bit short. Basically, if the Dolphins move around the other side, you get a surround bonus, and then you're going to do almost twice the damage. Unfortunately, that's not how that fight went, so these uh, Green units are much more scuffed up than I think they could have been. Uh, the capital ship is out now. My goodness, what a deposit of metal. 18,000 big ones right down the drain right there. For what it's worth, though, it will clean all of this up quite nicely. Submarine's gonna have a field day blasting it apart. Oh my goodness, actually having a great time blasting it apart. Are we gonna bring the, or bring the uh, capital ship down? It'd be pretty impressive. No, I don't think so. Ambassadors here, so annoying though. Tickling away at all of this. Yeah, here come the lightning tanks to burn away a whole bunch of the wind turbines here as well. Eventually those lightning tanks are cleaned up once the Red Commander starts producing. Big Marauder run by on this side, though. Yeah, those Yellow Marauder went across the ocean and popped up on the other side of the map right here. Beautifully done. They popped the Advanced Geothermal over here from the Blue Commander. The Fusion Reactors go up as well from the Purple Commander. Oh, my goodness. Just a couple of Marauder have managed to completely equalize the tables here. Beautifully, beautifully done. These Marauder have done so much damage across the map. Oh, can we target the Anti-Nuke? We take out the Anti-Nuke, then all of this becomes nukeable as well. Never comfortable to uh, see an Anti-Nuke being blasted away by the opponent, right? Can only mean one thing. They're thinking about nuking you. Razorbacks eventually pumped out by jumps over here. They do manage to clean up the majority of the Razorback, but the green lab does go down over here, which is also a little bit awkward. Ah, you know what? Those submarines eventually won out over here, which is pretty impressive. Capital ship is still alive, hanging out on the shoreline. Cyan Commander goes down to the Fiend spam that is being pumped out by the Red Commander. Yeah, those Marauder, though, they have done so much damage. One, two, three bases effectively have been wiped out here. Razorback eventually going to clean all of that up. But, man, what a run by. Oh, here they go for another one. Four bases. It's, it looks like they're about to make it. Yeah, there goes the Cyan base as well. Beautiful, beautiful play by the Yellow Commander. Using the units effectively in their effective position for their effective role. This right-hand side is under siege, but it's about time we do an effective, or do something similar, rather, and a similarly effective strategy. Marauders, amphibious tanks, basically anything like that. Are we going to address these Marauder, or are we simply going to allow them to exist, is the question on everybody's minds today. Loads of Razorbacks coming up right here, so at the very least, we're going to have an answer eventually. Wow. Talk about devastation. Both teams taking a huge hit right to the face here. Blue team smashing through the front lines of the red here, but the red sabotaging the back line of the blue here and shutting down so much of their production. Basically, the back line is the only ones with any legitimate eco at this point. EP bombers coming in clutch. Depositing a nice layer of electromagnetic pulse right on top of those poor, unfortunate paladins over here. Very nicely done. Thors are now coming up. Good to see. The Thor is one of those units that just seems to be overwhelmingly powerful. Can do so much damage across the map. Which are Razorbacks actually walking dangerously close to the fire zone of these uh, units over here. Here we go. T3 is on the line. Now there are some Mammoths that have been pumped out here. Mammoths very sturdy. Even good enough to go up against Razorbacks. However, Razorbacks more than happy to just ignore them. Yeah. No reason not to either. EMP bombers coming out, by the way. We've seen some beautiful EMP bombing in the last couple of episodes, so always happy to see some more of it. 
Medium landmines. Actually pretty good against Marauders, yeah. About, uh, what was that, 21% damage? Not bad. Razorback back, we'll blast down at least one of those Marauder before it... Uh, maybe two? Okay, make it two. Before it does eventually go down. The Thor here is going to be much better for dealing with these units. Very slow, but if it can deal with these units, it will do a tremendous amount of damage. It takes a lot to shut down a Thor. They have so much health. They're extremely, extremely sturdy. The dragon of the land, if you will. <laughs> Both teams sent to the Stone Ages, though. Love the naval fusions coming up over there, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, Razorbacks don't spot the commander over here. Nice D-Gun. One, two, and three big D-Guns right there from Chiral. Manages to clean up all those Razorbacks before they get too much further and do a whole lot more damage. There were some Scorpion turrets coming up right here, but I don't think... Uh, or So I don't think that uh, D-Gun would have altogether mattered too much, but it's still beautiful to see it happen. T3 is essentially cleaned up, and now Thors are on their way to the front lines right now from jumps. I suppose figuring we might as well go for as much economy as possible here. The Red Navy is looking fabulous. Looks like the build power over here was completely shut down, so no longer are those uh, T2 boats being pumped out in mass by Kilbo Fragons. Also a stunning economy on the back of this as well. We have T1 constructors and a T2 air lab all coming up. Uh, we do have Aphis's being built over here as well. The Red Commander certainly getting prepared for that epic late game. Much more so than the Green Commander. You can see we've got a couple of fusions and a couple of advanced energy converters, but not quite the same eco-scaling as we are prepared with here. So this is the time when you ask for a scout plane. You beg and plead for a scout plane from your air player, and you hope that he sends it over this area right here so you can start to barrage it with all your missile ships and your capital ships. I mean, what are these capital ships really doing right now? 35,000 metal to uh, bombard this spot over here with nothing there. Yeah. This is, this is the point in the game where teamwork becomes absolutely critical because one of your players is going to have way more resources than all the rest. So if that player isn't willing to work with everybody else, then it's just a tremendous APM drain. Uh, yeah, drain and, uh, or tax, you could say. You end up in a bad situation. Thor, more than happy to waddle through these bases. Kind of slowly slipping and sliding across the ground here. Just blasting away everything it can find. T1, T2, T3, doesn't matter to the Thor's eyes. It's twin lightning rod cannon guns. More than happy to just obliterate whatever it points them at. Sort of the ultimate eraser. It just uh, removes things from existence. Little EMP accessory cannons on the left and right hand side, also quite nice. Reminiscent of the uh, land ships of early tank hood. Refined pictures or anything of those. They look quite bizarre. Big, uh, big metal boxes with kind of doors and hatches and open areas where you can just stick machine guns out. <laughs> sort of basically portable bunkers is kind of what I think of those as. Anyway, off topic here is the Red Navy has far surpassed the green. That capital ship acting as a beautiful centerpiece for this naval force. Buccaneers included here as well. Some anti-air. All very, very nice to see. T1 destroyers produced in mass here. Don't think those are going to be your saving grace right now. Frankly, I don't think there is one for Kilbo Fragments, who just doesn't have the force, and especially if we're just going to stream them in one by one. If uh, all of these units that have been sacrificed right here, if every single one of these units had been saved in the back and just built up a force, if we had saved them all up, and if we had used them all at the same time, there's a chance that they could have taken a decent enough trade to make the red player back off. Uh, maybe even enough to buy some time here to get some higher quality units out, but unfortunately they were all thrown away one by one, and that does mean that the Red Navy is going to have absolutely no problem efficiently sweeping across the face of this green player and wiping them from the map here. Advanced Torpedo Launchers built all the way in the back, doing a decent amount of damage. I mean, not to be understated here, they definitely do about 15% to one of those Buccaneers and uh, quite a lot to everything else. They're, they're quite powerful, but you can't really rely on one of them. You need about 10 of them. Commander goes down right underneath the T2 lab. More than happy to blast away all the uh, friendly production right here. As I get a text from my grandma, the G-mama. Concerned about the weather. <laughs> funny, to, funny to imagine explaining this game to uh, my grandmother. Pretty interesting. 
wonder if she would enjoy it. Bulwarks here blasting away at the Thors on the front lines. Thors have this funny little ability where they stick up their elf ears on the side of their hats, and uh, an EMP missile comes out. All you have to do is hit D. D is in Delta, and an EMP missile pops out of their head, and you can fire it away halfway across the map, completely paralyzing anything that it hits. It's extremely powerful. Extremely, extremely powerful. And if you're using Thors and you're not using their EMP missiles, you're missing out on one of the fundamental strengths of the unit, which is a bit of a shame here, because it looks like, indeed, Jup's not so, so, not so concerned about using the EMP missile and more so just concerned about putting big lightning tank on the front lines here. Maybe that's a little overcritical, though. For what it's worth, big lightning tank on the front lines can do a huge amount of work. As we've seen, the uh, EMP bombers completely ineffective against the Thor as it is resistant 100% to all forms of EMP here. Gunship's going to clean up the very rest of these Buccaneers on this way, but they've already eliminated the player from this side of the map. Looks like the Black Hydra did go down, so that's nice at the very least. So much of an investment has been built over on this shoreline. Ah, we are going for Juggernauts, though. Beautifully done. Okay. Quad definitely familiar with a way to end this game. It's called the Juggernaut, and it's more than happy to stomp, stomp, stomp its way directly into the heart of the enemy base here. Titans are also on the front line, walking their way slowly but surely forwards. Those Thors, though, pretty good against Jugger or pretty good against Titans. Juggernauts, too, I suppose. It's one of the uh, one of the better options, maybe. Titans quite sturdy, but the Thors have a combined total HP that's much, much higher. Their DPS also going to be quite a bit higher as well. If the Titans can kite the Thors, though, it could be a different different battle. Hey, you know what? If they can manage to blast away with those backpack pulsars, maybe we're going to be able to see something effective happen here. It's a tricky battle, though. There's certainly not enough Titans on the field, at least not yet. Juggernaut is out, stomping its way across. Beautiful screenshot right there, by the way. Lovely stuff. Oh, I almost want to invert it. There we go. Beautiful. Juggernaut walking its way up the beach with the uh, capital ships firing away in the background. Pretty beautiful. Switch into this camera as well. Do a little bit of uh, first person view. Spectating. Can, can lock onto this bad boy as well. Can I. Oh no, I can't. Okay. I was hoping I could raise the camera. The footsteps, man. So, so, so da daunting. Literally makes the ground quake underneath its. Super heavy leather boots. Those hydro pneumatic legs. Actually, I don't know what kind of pneumatics they would use. Something sci-fi, probably. They're too good for water. Settle the settings back to normal. There we go. Middle of the map. Trying to deal with more of these stores. More bulwarks coming up right here. I mean, it's not bad. It's the best defense Cortex has, but Pulsars would definitely serve a little bit better here against the Thors. The super heavy tanks are extremely difficult to do. My goodness, talk about Pulsars. We have, in combined total, seven Pulsars, which is enough to bring down a Juggernaut, by the way. Oh, D-Gun connects. Oh, my goodness, what a beautiful explosion. D-Gun from Chiral does manage to shut down the D-Gun, or shut down the Juggernaut, rather. Comes at the tremendous cost of the entire base up here, though. Just brutal. For reference, by the way, uh, I know this is a very niche fact, but I did have to learn it when I was completing the scenarios, the Beyond a Reason scenarios. Uh, it takes nine Pulsars to stop a Juggernaut before it does any damage to your base. So we were close. We were at seven right here. If we had just built a few more, we actually would have been able to shut down the Juggernaut before it could even do anything. Unfortunately, not the case right here for the Brown Commander, Devo. Yeah, Devo. Not Davo. Still like the economy a whole lot better for the blue team. Only 300 more in the uh, in the production right now. 300 more metal, that is. But the red team is making it all up with reclaim and whatnot. Construction ships doing a great job here. Building so much static defense. These bulwarks doing an excellent, excellent job of thwarting a lot of these tanks. And again, you pull the EMP missile out and you shut down all these bulwarks. And suddenly you've got yourself a $18,000 deposit that is worth absolutely zilch on the front lines. Ah. Bummer. Bummer to see. I'd also love to see these, or these uh, lightning tanks handed over to players that were obliterated on the front lines. 
lot of the uh, blue team still remains here, even though a lot of them were wiped out on the fronts. We'll love to see them handed back over so that we can micro, uh, or so the units on the front can be microed by people who have spare EVF without worrying about it while we're trying to eco in the back here. The economy has just continued to grow, though. No reason at this point for the economy to stop scaling. You've essentially, uh, you being Selene, has enough production here to scale the economy and produce T3 units, which is a terrifying point in the game because it does mean that it's the uh, part where eventually you can start to spam out T3 units. So unhappy with the lack of EMP missiles, though, I have to say. So, so unhappy about it. Surprised we're not going for Shiva as well. Uh, Juggernaut completely resistant to EMP, by the way. Why are we not supporting these Juggernauts? Why are we not supporting these Juggernauts with any kind of unit? 29,000 metal. Or one commander. Who would win? The commander, obviously. Ah, what a bummer. What a bummer, indeed. Looks like this uh, brown base, by the way, has been handed over to the yellow commander, the dwarf, who is going to be trying to hold the front lines here. Juggernaut has been produced and sent out by Selene out of the T3 lab. Multiple Juggernauts, actually. We're going for uh, our third Juggernaut, it would appear. Yeah, looks pretty good. Capital ship could certainly come across and do some damage over here. You know what I also would love to see? Uh, some more Marauders. I feel like we sort of neglected the Marauder potential here. Still a very valuable unit, very viable. There we go. We finally do have some hovercraft being spammed out at the very least. Going to be uh, decent for cleaning a whole lot of this up. Providing sh a shield. A shield in the dark for those uh, poor unfortunate juggernauts who have been so far de-gunned apart. Thor's up on the high ground, having a great time. Blasting away at all these. Skeet shooting, as it were. There we go. Finally, some Shiva marching forward. Ooh, spy tank was spotted over here. Cheeky little spy tank. Does manage to sneak into the enemy backline. No anti-nuke in this little corner, so you might be able to sneak a nuke over here. Oh, very close call right there. <laughs> oh, there we go. Chain reacts all that. Beautiful chain reaction. Oh, that's so frustrating. Single spy tank manages to take down the entire economy, rebuilding right there for Webby. Tank, meanwhile, in a whole lot of trouble uh, as the Juggernaut has been once again degunned by Chiral here. Commander with uh, seven kills under his belt. Three of those have been Juggernaut kills. Beautifully done. The Shiva push is pretty daunting, though. Eventually, this tank will fall. Thor is now pushing on the northern side as well. Oh, that Titan doesn't stand a chance. So many bulwarks over here. You know it'd be great against the bulwarks. Do I have to say it again? Boop, 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 boop. 40, 40 EMP missiles would shut down all those bulwarks. They even shut down the Titans, so... It's a, you know, it's a multifaceted sort of available defense. Pulsar's having a grand old time, blasting away at the, uh... Yeah, blasting away at all the, the, uh... Oh, what are they called? Shivas marching up this hillside here. Anti-air getting into the base, too. A couple of Seekers as well. Finding their way into the yellow fortification zone. We're divulging into all out spam. Love the eco over here. We're just going for full blown production as much as possible. We've got the fusions queued up. We've got the energy converters already built. Looks wonderful. Perfect for printing Shivas. And my goodness, we are printing Shivas. That's like a Shiva every three seconds or something like that. Not bad. This uh, Shiva wall is very expensive. The, sh the Shiva parade push. Very, very expensive to go for here. Saving them up and sending them out would probably be a little bit more efficient here. Especially against these pulsars. Yeah, this push on the northern side is becoming dangerous, though. Yeah, we have the juggernauts, we have the titans. All sorts of those heavy hitters are going to be really difficult to deal with. 
I'm surprised we haven't seen a single juggernaut or something spared to send around the uh, northern side over here through the water. I'd love to see it. Two or three Shiva, a juggernaut, anything to send through that side, do a little bit of damage. I think I'd like it quite a bit. Cairo has been repaired. Ready to continue degunning juggernauts. His prime directive, degun juggernaut. Thor's here now having to contend with the juggernauts on the northern side. If we're not going to spread out the Thors, then those juggernauts are absolutely going to have a field day. Their shotgun cannon is immense. Perfect for dealing with big clumps of units. Also helps the juggernauts favor that it is a uh, very, very effective unit at close range, and the Thor does not have an overall tremendous range to its uh, lightning cannon. It's a high range, but relative to T3, it's not immense. At this point, I feel like I'd like some construction turrets up here. Just try and repair everything. Feels like the right idea. Quad really doing a great job of spending the metal. I appreciate that we're at least producing units. I wish we would just build up a ball and send the units in one big push, though. So much more effective than parade pushing Shivas into a line over here. Beautiful, to say the very least. I have to give credit where credit is due. It is a beautiful spectacle to watch. Grunt's pushing on this side here. All right. Resbots patching up whatever they can on the front lines here as well. Trying to pick up Thors, Titans, Mammoths, anything they can find. The leftover ruins of a battle long lost. Economy looking fabulous right now for the Red Commander. Surprised we aren't going for, at this point, a couple of Ragnaroks or something. Anything to do some damage across the map here. We have a nuclear missile chamber. Zero nukes charged so far from Monkey Ross. I if we fired it already. The uh, Red Commander. Oh, we do have an anti-nuke. Okay, I was a little worried for a second there. I thought we didn't have an anti-nuke. This area is nukeable, though. As well as, again, this area right over here in the corner. I don't think you can do too much with an Armada nuke, but a Cortex nuke might be able to do something there. Ah, the Shiva push is bugging me more and more the more I look at it. You can imagine this many Shiva just built up on the beach, a hundred or so Shiva, and you send them all across. The Thors and the Pulsars will do immense damage, but they won't be able to kill them all. Slowly the Shiva are whittling all this down because of the fact that they can fire their rockets before they die. Man, does it take a while, though. Go ahead and speed this up. Let's see. Oh, man, yeah. Still still maintaining a decent FPS and double X speed. Pretty impressive. I'm uh, always blown away that this is even possible. Did we learn how to use the EMP missile? Oh, my goodness. I think this Thor must have learned how to use its EMP missile. Those bulwarks were paralyzed. It's beautiful. I never thought I'd see the day. Oh, demons are being produced. Okay. Demons are being produced out of DVLA Andy M's lab right here. Love to see that. The demons are waterproof. You can send them underwater as well. Would love to see those march around to the northern side of the map. We do have hovercraft building, by the way, from the blue team. We have the uh, green player making some of those T3 hovercraft. Not a bad idea. <sighs> this push over here has been such a failure. <laughs> This, this is such an economy, such an immense economy that's been built up right here by Quad. And it's just being wasted building a whole bunch of Shiva right now. Such a waste. Nuclear missile does connect with that back corner over there. That's interesting. Looks like it didn't have enough punch to actually do too much damage to anything else over here. Still quite nice, though. Maybe scary is the, uh, the best it can do. It's better than nothing. Here are the demons pushing back. Demons do have a high enough DPS to actually deal with Thors. You can see them burning them down pretty quickly there. A couple percent a second. Like 1.7% a second. Which is not bad. Ah, there we go. We are indeed going to go for a Calamity over here. I was just about wondering when it was time to go for a Calamity. We have enough economy to go for Calamities up on these hillsides as well from either team. Surprised it's taken this long. Easy to forget about those T3 though. At 
this point in the economy, I think the Red Commander could probably afford multiple calamities. How many, how many air constructors do we have over here? 123. One, two, three. Kind of beautiful. What an epic late game. Oh, a Thor even over here. Okay. We use the Thor to paralyze the Pulsars. Now that's a novel idea. Nope. It will die. Just like so many have before him. Tremors over here not being used very efficiently either. Tremors have to be manually fired, otherwise they end up just either shooting at their own team or they end up shooting at their, uh... Well, they end up trying to target multiple units all over the place and it just doesn't end up working out. New connects over here. It's not bad. So much T1 spam. You gotta wonder if T2 spam is the option, is the is the appropriate choice. Ooh, a juggernaut. Uh, well, I was thinking about moving in that direction anyways. Hasn't quite moved in that direction yet, but it is thinking about it. How do we end this game? Well, an air player could definitely end this game by sending in a couple of bombers. The red team, definitely on the back foot here. Calamity is almost finished, though. 20 seconds left on that bad boy. It will come up pretty soon here. Juggernaut's blasting away at whatever they can. It's mostly T1 spam, so not supremely effective, but fair enough. There we go. Yeah, the tremors are working now. Just told to fire in this direction. <laughs> Obliterate anything in that direction. Not bad. They're going to start firing away at these uh, pulsars over here as well. And the pulsars are very close together. It means a chain reaction could occur. If those trippers aren't dealt with, this could eventually whittle down the yellow commander quite nicely. Uh, this is one way to deal with it, though. Yeah. Sending those uh, juggernauts across. Meanwhile, the Ragnarok has started to fire. It's going to start shooting across the map here. Probably aiming for that geothermal, I imagine. Yep, more or less. There we go. One of those does connect with the advanced energy converters over there and pops the energy conversion economy for the blue commander. Total loss. It's only a matter of time before that switches targets here and actually fires at something meaningful. It's quite nice. T3 hover tanks finally making a play over here on the ocean side. Blasting away whatever they can. Taking down some res subs. Taking down some buccaneers. Taking down some anti-air as well, which is always nice. Shield generator not able to keep up. Oh, down it goes. Just like that. It is about time that we start thinking about investing. Oh, anti nuke. Oh, just a second too slow right there. Brutal. Anti nuke, just a minute too slow. Just a couple seconds too slow. If that had come up just a little bit sooner, that nuke wouldn't have collided right there. But unfortunately, just not fast enough. Wow. Talk about an offensive calamity. There we go. Quad ready to end this game, it would appear. Can this Calamity fire at anything? Uh, yes, it can fire into the direct back line of the yellow player here, as well as the orange player. That'll be brutal. This Calamity, oh man, what a waste. This Calamity is still just firing at the blue base. Retarget, please. Please retarget. All that firepower for a drop of blue. Calamity coming up slowly but surely right here. 600 metal per second. Not doing too terribly. There we go. Calamity does eventually retarget here and takes out the purple base as well. Shutting down some of that production. Very important. This Calamity doesn't have a great angle into any of the other bases over here. Maybe. Maybe if it shoots over this hillside, it could, uh, could hit the red base. Yeah, I can see that happening. With some clever targeting, you might be able to convince that Calamity to fire a whole lot further than it actually is intended to. If you target it at that hillside, it can shoot way into the back line over there. So much devastation right in this choke point here. My goodness. What a mess. There we go. Calamity now firing away at that. The uh, Cyan Fortification Zone over there. Uh, Calamity almost up and running for Quad. He has plenty of energy to fire it here. I think it takes 20,000 a second. I think it's 20,000 a second. I could be wrong. 
There we go. Offensive calamity starts firing. It's beautiful. Like a work of art. Oh, there it goes. Firing into the back line. Pop go the energy converters. Oh, there goes the entire metal economy for the yellow commander. Beautiful explosion. Takes out all of the aphises right there for the yellow commander. Continuing to fire into the back line as well. Popping whatever it can. Yeah, there we go. Gonna fire over this mountain range too. Glancing shots will deflect into the back over here. Oh no. <laughs> it's a calamity battle. Oh, I liked where we were shooting before. Can these calamities actually reach each other? Not quite. Yeah, neither of the calamities can actually shoot each other quite nicely. We're uh, hovering in the air over here. Always cool to see. Calamity not firing right now. What a bummer. There we go. Keep that thing devastating the enemy. Can we fire it back here? Uh, just barely. Could probably hit the Aphises over here. I doubt they're scouting for that, though. Yeah, we haven't scouted the enemy backline right here, so I'm not aware of exactly what's going on. Oh, might need to use the Calamity defensively here as well. Certainly use it to blast away this Thor. Could certainly use it to blast away this Thor. Oh, no, we're not going to use it, are we? Ugh. Not great. Calamity will go down over here. My goodness. Oh, prepare your will degun. Do we have a cloak? Oh, it is cloaked. It just hasn't recloaked. Well, keeping the calamity alive for just a second longer. Doesn't matter though. Well, we take out the anti nuke. Oh, that take out, takes out the anti nuke that covers the backline over here. It means that that's nukeable for sure. Doesn't matter though. Those titans and demons take down the calamity right here for the powder blue player. Also going to mean that they start overflowing a whole lot of metal. Whole lot of metal. The age of T1 spam has ended. It's time we go into full-blown T3. Behemoth's marching across the map here. Eventually, this Titan taking overwhelming fire will collapse. And the Shiva march resumes. All of that calamity just to open up these pulsars right here. I will remind you that a single Thor, <laughs> a single Thor with two EMP missiles could have shut all that down. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Zara's being used over here, quite sturdy, and pack a crazy wallop. Probably not as efficient as T3 at this point though. Some demons running over in this direction as well. Oh, Smackdown, this behemoth blasting away any of these that it can find. So efficient if you're going to blow those units up. Oh, no. The projectile travels through all these units, so every single one of them is being hit by the projectile as it soars through them. My goodness. The efficiency on this behemoth is off the charts. This behemoth is going to kill all of this, isn't it? Ladies and gentlemen, this is why we need to split our units. Just like that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Thors have gone down to a single behemoth. Behemoths are not even as expensive as a Juggernaut, by the way. Just want everyone to be crystal clear about this. The Behemoth is cheaper than the Juggernaut. Whoa, these plasma projectiles are glancing all over the map here. Dangerous. Quite dangerous. Bouncing all over the place. Looks like the Green Commander has offered a little bit of wisdom. You group your bigger units up instead of sending them one by one, they do better against defenses. Absolutely true. Sending a big push instead of a steady stream. Much more effective. Oh, nuclear bombers trying to connect with that calamity over here. Ugh, having a hard time. <laughs> yeah, having a really hard time, actually. Oh, they take out some of the build power over here. Explosion? Oh, oh, maybe. Oh, explosion does take out that build power as well. So annoying right there. So, so annoying. Finally, this has been broken through. What are these Shivas queued to at this point? Nothing, really. Bulwark's having a field day. Yep. 
Airplanes definitely have a lot of potential right now. You can imagine going to some EMP bombers. Paralyzing this entire force over here would be tremendous. You can imagine nuclear bombers would be quite effective here, and indeed that's what we've seen from uh, Aaron NL, who's gone for some of those nuclear bombers. The EMP bomber's not going to have any effect against juggernauts here. Jugger or not, sorry, not juggernauts, behemoths. Which are more than happy, by the way, to blast through all of these units over here. I think it's an extremely tough for, for, uh, front line, an extremely fortified front line. Say that five times fast. These glancing projectiles are sent all over the place. Very dangerous. Any one of those catches your back line and it's game over. The surround bonus from the Shiva is actually quite pen quite uh, quite powerful here. I was going to say, it penetrates the armor of these juggernauts quite nicely. Although, something tells me that the Shiva is not so much about armor-piercing, fin-stabilized, discarding Savo rounds. Much more uh, high-energy explosive. <laughs> team realizing if they lose all their units to uh, two behemoths, suddenly they have no more units. This is called the units paradox of any RTS game. If you lose all your units, then suddenly you don't have any more units. It's been uh, it's, it's actually puzzled RTS players for years and years. And there's a lot of effective solutions to this, but uh, so far no one unified solution has actually been discovered. Here's a solution the Cortex Commanders can rely on, though, and it's called the Juggernaut, as it storms across the map right now. Beautiful march. Cinematic as all hell. Go for a uh, switch into F FPV. Watch this from the side angle. Titans retreating backwards from the Juggernauts. The Juggernauts do not seem to care. More than happy to keep stepping forward bit by bit inch by inch, slowly pushing their way towards the production centers of the green and the blue. Surprised we aren't uh, going for more marauders or anything like that here. Oh, Microing the juggernauts back too, beautifully done. Love to see that. Wow. I cannot believe it, but the red player has managed to claw themselves back into this game. Their entire team back into this game. The bot spam is out now. Hundreds and hundreds of units are now running across the map as the Juggernauts begin to continue their push. Begin to continue their push. They continue their push. <laughs> My goodness. These Juggernauts need to keep moving over here. Yeah, there we go. Selene realizes. Keeps that Juggernaut while walking. One more blast from the heat ray. There we go. The advanced fusion reactor pops for the purple commander. And my goodness, I think the red team may have done it. Coming back from the absolute brink of annihilation. Managing to push well into the hearts of now the blue team over here. Pulsars are up. We need about nine of them. I wasn't joking. Nine pulsars kills the juggernaut before it gets within range to do any damage. More or less. Sometimes the explosion can tickle the uh, pulsars. There we go. Titan's going to be enough with the assist right there but beautifully done. Suddenly, this whole base over on the bottom side is also ravaged. Yeah, Behemoths walking their way across here. Behemoths effectively the T3 killer of T3 killers. So about 10% of that Juggernaut's HP just got liquidated. Calamity is back up and running, and we're firing it away at the front line. Ugh. Not ideal. We just don't have any scouting, do we? Yeah, there's hardly any scouting of what actually is going on over here, since so Calamity doesn't know exactly where it should be firing. It could target the soft underbelly right here of the red team, but unfortunately, just not the case. I suppose you can't really produce behemoths out of the amphibious lab, which is part of the issue here. 1% per shotgun blast from the Juggernaut. Terrible, terrible efficiency right there. Only going to take one or two blasts from the behemoth to shut down this calamity, though. Forward they march. <laughs> there they go. 
down goes the calamity, reduced to rubble, and it takes everything in the vicinity with it as well. My goodness. Nuclear bombers being sent across the map. We're trying desperately to take out whatever we can over here. Long-range anti-air missile is going to be great for taking down those bombers, though, especially if we're just setting them in in a little group like that. Not going to work out so well. Just like that, it looks like the red team has done it. They managed to push back the blue menace after a very hard-fought battle. I'm at a little bit of a loss for words. The blue team clutching defeat from the jaws of victory here. Loads of clumped up titans here as well. Wonder if maybe we can hand these to a teammate that's been devastated. Try and find somebody who needs something to micro and hand off some titans so they can be microed appropriately. Maybe not the end of the world. But down they go. Juggernaut's trading extremely efficiently. Love on the minimap, by the way. You can see the projectiles flying across from the calamity. Are we going to go for an offensive calamity is the question. Uh, Monkey Ross calls a resign vote here. Jump says, not sure how we didn't win this. Couldn't tell you, but the red team, they just had that determination. They were willing to hold over on this right-hand side. They were fed about 4.8 billion Shiva worth of metal. And uh, I guess at the end of the day, that's really all it takes in order to bring yourself back at this point. Whoa, it's a lot of dragons headed over. Yep, this is a very easy way to shut out a game right here. Build enough dragons and not even air will be able to shut it down. Airplanes, I mean. Fighters. There they go. Dragons blasting away the economy over here. Not exactly the juiciest economy available, but there's not exactly anything too tremendous to shut all this down. There is some flak turrets over there. Watch and observe as they do absolutely zero zilch, nothing or nada against these dragons. There we go. Six flag turrets firing in tandem. Take down single dragon. Headline of the year. Fusion reactors begin to pop. Massive chain reaction right there as a ton of the base goes down right there for Aaron NL. Aaron, one of the commanders producing air right here. In fact, one of, yeah, maybe the only commander producing air right now. Why have we lost production over here for Prepare Your Aphis, by the way? Looks like Prepare Your Aphis has foregone production for a little while. Yeah, not spending the metal whatsoever. Bit of a shame. Maybe a bit overwhelmed by the scale of this one. Quad says you should all be embarrassed. Oh no. How toxic. The Marauder now ready to move over. There is actually a devastating landmine field over here. These are all medium mines. We'd love to see some heavy mines maybe set up over there. Not the end of the world, but could be useful. Juggernauts that were microed back will be repaired over here. That's quite nice. It's the Juggernaut Repair Spa. Aw, how adorable. That is an epic screenshot. The Calamity, the Dragon, the Juggernauts, all being repaired by the Sentries, the Bot Lab Spam. It's everything you could want and more in the epic late game, ca captured in a single photograph. Hilarious. Total loss calling for a resign vote, which is pretty ironic. Nuclear bombers could have, by the way, taken the entire path around the southern side into the base and blown apart this entire facility over here. No reason they couldn't have. Just like that, the red team actually manages to pull back from the brink of a total destruction, clutching a victory against all odds here. Absolutely felt like the blue team clutched defeat from the jaws of victory in this one. Tremendous, tremendous plays from the red team. What an epic match. Sure, hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the very next match of Beyond All Reason.